All right, welcome back. Today's the 14th video in our YouTube classroom for 3DS Max 2018. Today is quarter one, week three, day one. Today we're going to learn how to set up our concept art so that when we do our free project next week, we will have a good set of uh, dimensions and things like that that we are going to be able to build from. All right, so first things first, today I actually have a presentation for you because there's a lot of theory behind this. Because what we want to do is we want to have art that's set up in the background that we can use as a reference to build our objects from. So, let's see. Let's start this process now. There's that. Now, first things first, we need to get useful art. So, I want you to look at this piece of art right here. All right. That's pretty cool. It's obviously a, a halo rifle. And then we've got another piece of art. Now, which of these two pieces of art would you say is better? Like, this is obviously 3D art. It's pretty great. This is not 3D, it's 2D. It's also a slightly different gun, but let's just ignore that for now. Let's look at it. So the problem is this art doesn't work. If you look at it, this gun is set up perfectly, but we can't really see uh, orthographic view of any of the other directions. This one is fine, but these other four though they are really amazing and the 3d art is fantastic all four of these are not useful for us when it comes to making a new piece of art from it so that's why we will look at something like this this is great it's an orthographic view that is from multiple angles we've got a front view we've got a rear view now usually not as important a top view which is good and a left view We've also got a right view, but usually most everything is symmetrical. And when we build things, we will almost always be building symmetrical things. So, and it's pretty high resolution. As a matter of fact, we are going to talk about how to determine our image size. So in Windows 10, so I'm going to go back out here and I'm going to go to my class here where I keep that file. Uh, let's see. Yes. Okay. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. Here we go. Okay, so I've got this MA5C rifle. I can right click on that and go to properties and then look up details. Now in here, you can see the dimensions. The width and height are right here. Now the width in this case is left to right and the height, uh, the height is up and down. So 2146 by 1627. So what we want to do is we want to be able to pull this image into our 3D package and be able to look at it in the proper dimension. So if I create an image and I'm going to in the front viewport. So in the front viewport, I'm going to create a, I'm going to right click on that um, Alt P and I'm actually going to start this real quick. Okay, so Alt Alt P or Alt W, sorry, there we go, Alt W. I didn't want to get my little hotkeys up. Um, I'm going to maximize the front view and I'm going to create a plane. Okay, now I'm just going to pull this plane out for now. It doesn't really matter how big it is. And there you go. Now it's wireframe. And that's not good. We want to make sure that it's not wireframe. We want it to be standard and wireframe override is going to be turned off. We don't really care about the plane color, but we are going to call this ref for reference underscore front front ref underscore front. And this is going to be important. Now, our length and height currently are uh, our length is 144 and our width is 223. So our length is up and down and our width is 223. And I know that because I dragged out a rectangle. So I know that this image, let's get that back up. We said that image, looks like I just created another plane. And I shrunk my assets there. Okay, views, okay. Properties, okay, here we go. So we know, and I wanna minimize that a little bit so I can type in better. Um, we know that the details here, okay, so we know width is, it's obviously a rectangular image, okay? That's important to understand. Um, if you know that it's rectangular, so it's wider than it is tall, it's easy to understand. 2146 is the width. 
So I'm in the same sort of situation here. I've got this object. I'm going to click on the details. So I know the width here should be the same as what I have there. So 2146, 2146, enter. Now notice how big this thing is getting like 2,146 centimeters. All right, then height is 1627. We're converting pixels into centimeters, 1627. Okay, oops, enter. Oh, 1627, there. Okay, now you should be able to look at the image and look at the rectangle you've made and it should make sense. If it's bigger, if it's taller than it is wide, you've obviously made a mistake. Okay, cool. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to go ahead and open back up 3D Studio and we'll get into this. So, so this is my front reference. In the front view, I hit F and it's going to be right there. If I hit left, I only see the sliver, which, which makes sense because planes are paper thin. So I'm going to hit T for top and this is my plane. I'm going to select my plane, hit E, hold, make sure A for angle snap is set and then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Okay. Now what I've done is I've created a second plane. So this plane, actually I should have zeroed out this before I did that, but I didn't. So front view, make sure I'm default shading. Front view, top, control A. All right, there's that. Oh, I didn't hold shift. That's why. Left, <laughs> top. Okay, so I forgot to hold shift. That's my problem. So I hold shift. That's what I wanted to do. So now I have 90. I'm going to call this ref underscore left. Okay, so and I, I do that all the time. I hold my shift key too long. Okay, so now perspective view. You can see I've got my front view and my left view. Now, the lighting is not going to be great for this whole setup, so I'm going to uh, just go ahead and leave it for now. But eventually, what, we, what I want to do is from the front, actually from the top view, uh, I want to make another copy, right? I want to make another copy of this and call it top. So I know from the front, if I move up this way and I rotate and I hold shift and I drag this down, um, I will get exactly what I'm looking for. So now I've created a top view. The top view is going to go on the bottom. So the top view is going to go all the way down. So I hit W and I drag this down. And as I drag it down, I want you to look over here. As I drag it down, my Z becomes negative. I actually want to set my Z to negative 5,000. Negative 5, 1, 2, 3. Okay. So now if I hit the top view, that is still down there. That file is still down there, but from the front, it's way. it should be way out of our way. From the top view, I hit from, uh, from the t front, so I hit F for front, select this, hit T for top, and I'm going to drag it back. Now, you can't really see it, but you'll notice that when I drag it, it's moving positive on Y. So, from the front view, I'm going to go down here to Y, and I'm going to change this to 5,000 positive 5,000. I'm also going to center this on 0, 0, 0 on X and Z because I like to have things centered on X and Z and we'll change that later but for now that's fine. In the left view I've got this sort of this color object. Um, in the left view I'm going to drag it away. I accidentally held shift. I'll drag it away and I'll notice that it's going positive on X. So I'm going to select that. Oops. Double click it and make it 5,000 positive X. Okay. So front view. Um, let me make sure something. Okay. You'll notice that I screwed up and I turned it backwards. We all know that planes are only visible from one direction. And from the front view, I had set it up so that it was going the wrong direction. From the bottom. If I select this and top, if I grab this, I'm going to rotate it also 180 degrees so that I can see it from the top. So I usually also make sure that all of these positionally using W are set to zero, zero, and then negative 5,000 for the top view, 
front will be zero zero negative five thousand or zero five thousand zero for the front and the left view will be uh five thousand zero zero there and now they are all positioned so on my grid you can see that every single one of these assets are set and this is what it looks like for now so from far away this is what it looks like now granted these files are huge they're ridiculously huge so but like the the object itself the rifle is not going to be a hundred or a thousand um centimeters long it's going to be like one meter long maybe less so let's find out how we get to that point but this is the first sort of setup we needed to do so i think we're going to stop here for now because this is our basic setup so we've got our three uh planes set up and then when we come back we're going to talk about how we add those materials the materials to this that will work in the new uh, render system. Alright, I'll see you in the next video.